nerf has been under a lot of people's radar recently. No, not the toy gun nerf, and no, not the Overwatch Diva voice line. It's the nerf that Corridor Digital talked about, which is short for Neural Radiance Fields. And I was featured in their video. That's my desktop background from my tutorial video. Anyways, for those who don't know what nerf is, it's basically photogrammetry on crap. <clears throat> I mean, process with the AI. And because of the sheer amount of text to image, large language models, and many other things that are being published left and right by different companies, I'm actually not seeing a lot of nerf coverage, but these recent nerf research are just nuts. So today, let me show you the wonders that is nerf, which has been improving tremendously for the past few months, and how it's becoming the key to the future of VR, AR, and 3D. How nerfs are made is that you take a few photos or images out of the video, and the video content can be a scene or an object, and nerf reconstructs it for you by taking the viewing direction, spatial location from the images, and producing a volume rendering where you can then view it in a 3D space. This concept has been refined and built upon over the years since the first nerf research was published and it just gets even better and better. Remember that instant NGP research which I made a video about where that research cut down nerfs render time from like 10 hours down to like 1 minute? Well, let's start picking things up from there. There are so many ways to tackle and improve nerf and like instant NGP where the simplest advancements is of course improving its speed. Language models. You add language models. Alright, jokes aside, I wouldn't say that's the simplest advancement, but it's funny how putting language models into virtually any technology is the advancement trend right now. LERF, short for Language Embedded Radiance Fields, allows natural language queries in NERF's 3D space. At first glance, what they show in their demo really feels like some sort of black magic or something that would happen in a game, but how it actually works makes a lot of sense. The objects are able to be identified in NERF's 3D space is thanks to the idea of 3D clip embeddings. To quickly refresh your memory on what clip is, it's a model that builds a shared representation space for images and text. So it's able to map both the input image and a description text together thanks to its high dimensional space where Clip would be able to match them together if they are semantically relevant to each other. And instead of having Clip analyzing from a 2D point of view to do things like locating an object, they embed the Clip vectors volumetrically within the 3D space when building the nerf. So it becomes this 3D Clip embedding that is robust to occlusion and maintains a highly consistent appearance that can be clearly outlined from any viewing direction when you search for the object, while also sprinkling some multi-scale supervision to optimize the clip embeddings when used at different scales and adding dyno regularization to improve object boundaries as clip embeddings in 3D can become messy when some viewing regions are lacking, on top of not needing regional masks or fine-tuning and being able to do language queries in real time, LERV transformed NERF into a meaningful piece of 3D information that can be semantically processed by computers. That is insane! So NERF is is no longer just a colorful density blob devoid of meaning or context. This allows for possibilities like using large language models to interact with a nerf and understand 3D spatial information. Like in this official demo, they told ChatGPT imagine you're a cleaning robot and someone spilled coffee on the table, give a list of things to search for to clean it up, and ChatGPT is able to query lerf to search for items that can be used to clean or is relevant to cleaning, which is sick. Like today's sponsor Babbel, a language learning app that provides one of the most dynamic ways to learn a new language. They have the classic interactive lessons that can be catered to your personal needs, mini games that can train different types of language skills, and interesting blogs that explain how to say swear words. Babbel can help you pick up languages faster than you think. No matter what your motivation for learning a language is, Babbel can prepare you for the situations that you are looking for. What's even better is that Babbel has these online virtual classes where you can interact with their top language teachers to ask questions verbally. So yeah, to try out Babbel, just click on my link below where you can get 60% off to start learning today. Thank you Babbel for sponsoring this video. Anyways, the thing about nerf research is that it's hard to get people to put the same excitement and energy to it like AI image generations because half the time the improvements are like being more speedy, being more coherent, being uncentered and have an arbitrary path, being on a larger scale, being on an even larger scale, being on an even larger larger scale, being able to be used for stabilization, being able to be relighted, being able to handle multiple reflections because coming ghostbusters and such. So to stop people from sleeping on even more nerf research, someone decided to slap instruct pix to pix onto nerf called instruct 3d to 3d. It looks a bit scuffed, but the idea is definitely there. If you don't know instruct pix to pix, it's basically another diffusion based research that is able to edit images based on instructions. So by taking a few angles of the nerf, setting it into instruct pix to pix with the editing instructions, and updating the model with edited images using some calculus magic, then boom, you can convert it into pixel art, a fire scene, or even a 3d picasso 
Picasso painting. Another mildly interesting research is this 3D video loops from asynchronous input which can recreate a 3D scene while having both static and dynamic texture. Pretty amazing, right? And it's not nerfed at all. Wait, what? You know, I genuinely thought this was a nerf research when I first saw it, because look at these artifacts, but interestingly, it's not. They use a technique called multi-tile videos, and what it does is that it stores the same parameters in a 3D mesh and a set of 2D texture videos, which greatly outperforms nerf or even dynamic nerf in this specific use case. But what's a dynamic nerf, you may ask? Well, it's just a nerf, but other than storing spatial information, it can also store it over time like a video. Think of it like a 3D hologram from Star Wars without the hologram. It's a relatively new idea. In May of 2022, the first Nerf video aka Dynamic Nerf research was published. It was made using 18 cameras at the same time to capture a multi-view video to form this dynamic Nerf that can be viewed freely from different angles. Then in February 2023, Nerf players stepped up the Dynamic Nerf game, which is able to render a scene with just one camera with rendering speed of 21 seconds per frame. And nearly a year later, since the first Dynamic Nerf research, Hyper Real was released, and it's a direct improvement on what Nerf player can do. The results look so much cleaner and is able to handle reflections from different angles very well, which is amazing. But generative 3D nerf is on a whole other level. Given the reference, this research is able to regenerate unique, complicated, and large environments that algorithms would not be able to achieve. This definitely gives rise to the idea of a fully unique extreme realism 3D environment in a large open world. There are functions such as retargeting, like resizing the reference object or lengthening it, editing, which can duplicate objects naturally and remove them cleanly, or redecorating which reskin surfaces with literally no effort. This is like the Minecraft landscape generation but unpixelated, and the potential for this application is definitely going to make a lot of game devs very excited. But this other research that was just released while I was writing the script for this video is going to be the most insane one. We have previously seen text-to-3D synthesis whereby just using text, you can generate 3D objects and subjects that look slightly comical but discernible. There was even this quote-unquote 4D research where you can synthesize 3D 3D moving objects. I made a video on it, you can check it out. But this one, Prolific Dreamer, may have just brought the idea of two more papers down the line into reality. Let's just take a moment to stare at these text synthesized 3D objects in awe for a bit. We got clean edges, sharp details, and accurate mesh that was basically impossible six months ago. This research has set the bars even higher for 3D generative research here on out. Compared to Dream Diffusion, which I think was the first text to 3D object synthesis research, these are the incredible improvements these brilliant researchers have made in the past 8 months. Cut, cut. The, the competition is a lot more fierce than I thought. After only 5 days Prolific Dreamer was published, Haifa was announced to challenge the throne. They also claimed they are the set of the art, and looking at their results, this is presumably a reasonable claim. You can see some very sharp details too, and even the fur on the rabbit looks really natural. Damn, the 3 more papers down the line came a lot quicker than I thought. Cut to, <clears throat> oh my god, NVIDIA just announced their new nerf research. It's like the predecessor of Instant NGP called Neuro Angelo. What a great name. It was announced midway of my editing, same as Haifa, and why is it that when I'm making a video about a topic, some huge new research would always come out in the meantime. Anyways, Neuro Angelo is like disgustingly crisp. The accurate details which you can see in the surface normal that is generated from a video footage is just mind-blowing. It doesn't look like they will open source the code, but if you want to try out other nerf research, like generating a 3D scene from images or videos, there are two very popular options. The first one is Nerf Studio, which is an open source project that incorporates the latest nerf research and I think can run Lerf on it and it'll work in real time. Another very popular one is Luma AI Labs, which is a service that is available on browsers and app stores. It lets you easily generate nerf from your camera or files without the hassle of installing dependencies and understanding codes like for Nerf Studio which is a great place for non-tech people to try out Nerf, and it's free for the first few times. Both are able to extract to Unity if I recall correctly, and I think Luma AI Labs recently made it even easier to do that, so you can use Nerf as an actual environment for whatever 3D stuff you want to do, which is pretty cool. Not sponsored, by the way. And if you're still here watching this video, bravo to you staying until the end. Like and subscribe if you want to see more, and shout out to the people that were already subbed to me so I could celebrate my 100k subscribers much sooner. Thank you all for sticking with me on this AI journey for the past three years. 
years and thanks for all the nice comments because sometimes it's those that were able to keep me going i love you all and let's continue to watch this insane ai development together going forward oh and go watch my brand new weekly ai news series too it's called the ai timeline and in it i cover the most distilled ai news and memes in the past week shout out to andrew las chilias chris ledoux alex marie's and many others that support me through patreon or youtube follow my twitter if you haven't and i'll see y'all in the next one